All right, hello everyone. We're gonna be talking about creating a scalable foundation for Kubernetes multi-tenancy. My name is Lukande Mwila, or you can call me Luke, and I'm a senior developer advocate for Kubernetes at AWS. Uh, my name's Calvin Perotti. I'm a senior developer engineer at Hill Street. Great. So we're gonna skip the formality of an agenda because this is a lightning talk, but also where's the fun in knowing what's coming? Um, and as for that 404 error, that's my dad joke for the day. So I won't take offense if you don't laugh, but a smirk wouldn't hurt. Looks like I got one, thanks. All right, I wanna start off by talking about why we care about this topic. And so for starters, we've got firsthand experience in seeing the challenges around Kubernetes multi-tenancy. And we're aware that this may look different depending on the use case or the context, which means that some, some of the solutions or strategies around how you solve the challenges around multi-tenancy may look different. But we're of the mindset that there are some fundamental principles or universal concepts that can be applied uh, regardless of the use case. And that will allow you to essentially build a scalable solution around your multi-tenancy challenges. And that's what we're gonna be elaborating on. And the second reason is that we find that multi-tenancy is a very common model. Whether companies are using a single host cluster for several unrelated workloads, or in some situations, they'll go with a very strict or isolation approach having multiple Kubernetes clusters. But whatever the case, companies and teams are trying to find out the right way to apply security, segregation of their workloads, um, and essentially just structure things in such a way that they can seamlessly build and easily onboard additional workloads or cluster personas as time goes on. So this image over here just kind of depicts the idea of trying to find the best way to slice and dice your Kubernetes cluster. Well, let's talk a bit more about some of the common best practices. And these are fairly well known, things like namespaces to have a general way of, of organizing your workloads. In addition to that, you got network policies, which gives you a stricter approach to managing the network traffic, specifically ingress and egress traffic for your workloads. Then you've got resource management to try and prevent any resource hogging for your workloads. And of course, there's role-based access control to manage the permissions, not only for workloads, but also for the different cluster personas. And we're both of the mindset that each of these best practices essentially points to the main fundamentals that this whole talk is kind of aiming to drive home, which is organization and isolation. These are the core concepts that we believe can help you scale um, when it comes to having an optimal multi-tenancy strategy. And something that we were actually discussing in preparation for this talk was the fact that we both believe that your multi-tenancy strategy is something that should actually start on a whiteboard. And you can then have all the different parties of interests, the different projects or teams that will be working on that will essentially have their workloads running on your Kubernetes cluster. And based on what you strategize in that session, you then translate that to your Kubernetes cluster. We believe this is the right way to essentially create a blueprint for the future. And um, this is something that we got to apply to some degree on a project that we worked on years ago uh, together. And we were essentially both functioning as DevOps leads in a banking context on a particular project that was actually going to be the blueprint for several Kubernetes projects for that particular bank. And so this is something that we had to give a lot of thought to. And so there were multiple EKS clusters and one cluster was dedicated to running Argo CD, which would essentially manage the continuous delivery to different workloads. And when it came to multi-tenancy, Argo CD helped us in a big way because the concepts of projects and applications essentially allowed us to carefully organize the different environments that we had for our different applications, and of course, grouping that into a project. And this allowed us to be able to then easily scale for the future workloads that were going to be onboarded to those respective clusters that we were running. In addition to that, as time went on, it wasn't just a case of onboarding additional microservices. There were also more cluster personas, different people with different functions, whether it was solution architects or QA testers, and we needed to find the best way of giving them access to the cluster, and so Argo CD's concepts around projects, applications, and RBAC really complemented that. But as most of you probably know, if you've followed any kind of multi-tenancy strategy, Multi-tenancy doesn't just go as far as your GitOps strategy. There's also the lifecycle management of your Kubernetes clusters. And so we want to also talk about how you can complement what Argo already has to offer. And um, going back to what I mentioned earlier about these two main concepts, or two main approaches rather, that companies typically take with multi-tenancy, whether it's a single host cluster or several uh, separate Kubernetes clusters, um, we want to touch on two solutions that could potentially help in this case. One of them is Rancher, as you can see over there. And the reason we're mentioning Rancher is because Rancher also has this concept of projects, 
which is also meant to be a solution around multi-tenancy. It's a logical, in the, concept, in the context of Rancher, it's logical grouping of your namespaces. And you can also apply RBAC to those projects. So you have the same idea of, of projects, both in Argo and in Rancher, and it shows you how they complement each other and kind of point back to organization and isolation. But we are also aware of the fact that in other scenarios, companies would rather opt to have a single host cluster. And so for that, you can make use of something like vClusters, which will still give you the concept of separate Kubernetes clusters, but in a virtual context, and you can run all of those on a single host cluster and still make use of Argo CD to essentially deploy to these different downstream clusters. And that's what uh, Calvin is now going to demonstrate. Sure. Thanks, Luke. So yeah, when you think of multi-tenancy, there's kind of like two main ideas out there. So multi-tenancy through namespaces, or multi-clusters. The namespace um, multi-tenancy has the problem of if your developers are using CRDs and they're building against CRDs, those are cluster-wide resources, so you can't really use namespaces to divide. Then you get the multi-cluster scenario, which is quite expensive, quite big to maintain, and to bring up a new cluster is quite difficult. So with, the, with vCluster and Argo CD, we can use Argo CD to bootstrap virtual clusters and the developer gets the experience of he has his own cluster. Argo CD can connect to that cluster and run. So this is the repo that has a little demo of what we can go through, but essentially as the admin, we have multiple applications which are essentially clusters. So we have, if I just quickly scroll down to projects, we have a, a project for clusters. These are actual virtual V clusters that are deployed via Argo CD and once they're deployed, they are essentially Kubernetes clusters on the main host cluster. And they are configured, if you had to go to Argo CD, they are configured as clusters at the, v, the cluster A dot V cluster namespace. So essentially now Argo CD can deploy to these clusters. And now we can use this multi tens foundation to scale as many um, clusters as we want. And then each team has specific RBAC rules that allow them only to deploy to their specific clusters. So in this example here, we have, this is project A, their RBAC, they can only see app A that's deployed to their cluster A service. If we go to projects, they can only see their project, project A. If they go to the clusters, they can only see their cluster A. So they are in the mindset of they have their own virtual cluster. So for full isolation, and the same would be for project B. They have access to their, um, app in cluster B, their destination is cluster B, projects like this. And in order to do this, um, the, this is a, quick, this is a repo, public repo that um, deployed this entire solution. So if you could want to clone it, you can go for it. Um, a quick thing with the vCluster is every time, and we're using GitOps to bring up these virtual clusters. And every time we bring up a new cluster, we obviously need to deploy initial manifests onto this cluster to give Argo CD access to this cluster. So every time we create a, use a new cluster, we create a new service account, and we just bind that service account to, Argo, to a service account called Argo CD, and Argo CD can use that token to access that cluster and then start deploying it to it as, as any other cluster. Um, in this example, I've used a make file to demonstrate the steps of how to go through each creating the projects, deploy clusters, but in a, in a in a non-production environment, you could use workflows to keep bootstrapping your clusters and scale infinitely. And for, in this example here, to get, when we deploy clusters, we need to get that token of the, um, from the vCluster to tell Argo he has the token to connect to. And we just have a vCluster command to connect to it, but you can use Argo um, workflows to do the same logic. And in this way, we can achieve um, a multi-tenant environment using Argo CD and the nice thing is, if we have app sets using the cluster generator, if we have a base a foundation of applications, we just have an app set there, and every time a new cluster gets deployed onto Argo CD, it will automatically deploy all the necessary applications to this new cluster. And that's an easy way to just scale um, using app sets and Argo CD. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. Thanks.